Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Nighty Anand in the 15-minute pool in ICC. Let's keep the E4 train rolling against Nighty Anand. Ooh, he's playing my favorite opening. Well, obviously I accept that pawn. Last time I played uh, a variation involving Knight F3, although I think my opponent played Knight F6. Um, let's play Knight C3. <laughs> See, this puts me in an awkward position, because do I really want to show uh, the refutation to the Scandinavian? Or should I do something that uh, preserves the respect that my favorite opening deserves? <laughs> okay, well, I'm just going to play bishop c4. Let's check Nitty Anand's, Nitty Anand's, Nitty Anand's stats. He has a peak 15-minute uh, rating of 1840. 300 games played. Okay, very early bishop f5. Don't see that too often. Usually c6 or at least knight f6 are played. It does weaken b7, so I might be looking at queen f3 early on. But I think I'll actually play this short variation with d3. d3, bishop, d2, queen e2, etc. Let's see if we can get something going against him in this line. Always tough playing against the opening that uh, you like from the other side of the board. It's never a fun position to be in. Unless you know that there's a, a line in that opening that is like clearly good to play. <laughs> Alright, so here, I think I'll play queen e2. I'm not going to do a discovery against this queen quite yet. Yeah, I'll play queen e2. This bishop can be a target for attack. One idea now is g4, bishop g6, h4. And then if, let's say, h6, in order to give the bishop a retreat square in view of h5, um, after h6, I can play knight d5, hitting the queen. Let's say queen back to d8, and then knight f4, attacking the bishop on g6, and also bringing about awkward pressure on e6 as well. So this one, I can maybe play a3, and if he takes, that's great for me, because I take back with the bishop, hitting both the queen on a5 and the pawn on g7. Problem is, after a3, he doesn't necessarily have to take my knight. He shouldn't take the knight. He should do something else, like knight f6. Hmm. I think I'll probably play g4, because this is still a pretty good idea. Like, one idea is g4, bishop g6, f4. I like the look of that. Yeah, let's do that. I could play bishop g6, h4, but... If he were to respond with h6 or h5, there's no knight d5 transfer to f4 anymore. So I'll just go for this move and threaten f5. Because he hasn't committed the knight, he could play knight e7 at this point. Not a bad idea. But I can then go knight f3. And I like having the f pawn in front of the knight. Fairly threatening for him. Knight e7 is almost forced in this position. He, he does play it. Now, do I want to play knight f3 right away? Or should I play a3 first? Because if I play knight f3, what if he goes h5 and tries to undermine my pawns? It's the only thing I'm not quite sure about. Hmm. Somehow I kind of like a3 a bit more. Let's do it. Let's just see how he responds. Because taking is still clearly bad. And if he takes, I get to attack g7. So I know this will put him in an awkward position. The only trouble is, again, I'm not threatening to uh, capture on b4. Because yeah, he's just played a developing move in the meantime. I could castle now and see if he's willing to sacrifice his bishop. If castle's bishop takes a3, he might get some comp if I play b takes a3, queen takes a3 check. But there is a trick here that's good to know. So castle's bishop takes a3, I can play knight a2. Discovered attack on his queen. And if queen a4, I have bishop b3, he might not get as much compensation as normal. I could also just play knight f3 now too. Hmm. 
even a move like bishop a2 is possible right now, covering the a-file and thereby threatening to take the bishop. It's a pretty interesting move. Bishop a2, bishop takes c3, bishop takes c3. If queen c7, I can take g7, and then put my bishop on h6 after rook g8. Maybe it's not bad. Likewise, I could move this rook, like rook d1 or something. Because if bishop a2 and he retreats the bishop, like let's say bishop to d6, well, then he's opening himself up for uh, moves like knight e4, attacking the queen and attacking the bishop on d6. Sometimes that's not fatal for him, but at the very least, that leads to a nice position for me, I think. Okay, let's try it. We'll see how he reacts. The main reason I chose this setup, I was thinking about doing it anyways, but he played that very early bishop f5. And in this short variation, bishop c4, d3, bishop d2, that bishop can be an object of attack with white's kingside pawns, as you're seeing here. Let's pre-move this capture. There's no harm in doing so. He might just want to play bishop d6 and allow knight e4 to be played. I think I'd be happy with that resulting position. Nope, he takes. So if he plays queen c7, I can take g7, he plays rook g8, and this is the variation I mentioned where my bishop ends up on h6. I could also play bishop e5 if I wanted. Knight takes e5, just pawn takes e5, or queen takes e5. So it appears that I'm going to go up a pawn now. Queen b6. So he's eyeing this long diagonal, but there's not much for him to do there. I think just bishop, bishop takes g7, just to grab the pawn. Bank the pawn. What if bishop takes g7, rook g8, bishop back to c3, and then h5? Is that anything to be concerned about? Probably not. No, let's grab the pawn. And then back the bishop off. Only reason I mention that line is because after h5, if g takes h5, he might be able to play bishop takes h5, and g1 was only defended by my rook, and his rook and queen would be coordinating on that square. Now it might be a moot point because I can castle or play knight f3. F5 is also tempting, um, but it doesn't work for tactical reasons. If F5, he can play E takes F5, and if I grab the knight on E7, rook E8, pinning my queen to the king. So that would be a mistake. And here I'm just debating between knight F3 or castling directly. Slightly leaning towards castling directly. I think I will play that. Reason being, if knight d5, I can just play bishop d2 without worrying about losing my b2 pawn. My king now protects it. I've been delaying the development of this knight for quite a while, but very soon I'll, I'll look to be bringing that piece out. If knight d5, I could of course just take it. Bishop takes d5, but I might want to preserve my bishop pair advantage for a while. What if knight d5, bishop d2, queen d4 attacking f4? Probably just queen e2 handles, or queen f3 rather, handles that. And then I could play my knight to e2 instead of f3. Yeah, that should be all right. Yeah, let's keep this bishop and keep this bishop too, not exchange on d5, because later on I might push him back with a uh, pawn to c4. You never know. If h5, I can take the pawn now, so no worries there. f5 would be a bad move. Weakens e6, I'd probably just play g5 against that. 
Knight c5 is active, he might try that one to apply pressure to d3. But I think if knight c5, I can just play knight f3, looking to play knight e5. And unless he has some immediate sack on d3, he's going to get pushed back. He could go knight c5, knight f3, knight a4, attacking b2. Bishop b3, knight c5. Maybe that's something to be worried about. I could always play bishop takes d5 then. So his compensation should not be sufficient. Okay, he just plays a centralizing move and probably knight, C, uh, knight f3 now. If knight f3, queen c7, I can go knight e5. Yeah, and that blocks his attack on f4. Okay, development it is. So this is nice. We're fully mobilized. We're up a pawn. We have the bishop pair. Good start against our favorite opening. F6. That seems passive. I think he's trying to reintroduce the bishop into the game with bishop f7. Hmm, looks horribly passive. One thing I notice is that this knight is running out of flight squares to go to. So, like, knight c7 and knight e7 would be the only available retreat squares if I played uh, c4. And the e7 would block the rook from defending e6. So I'm going to be on the lookout for c4, a timely c4. Right now, I don't think it's that good of an idea. I probably should just play a move like rook hg1. But I'll be looking at this possibility. Ah, maybe he's actually trying to improve on the idea I just mentioned. So now that the e5 score is covered, I wonder if he's trying to play queen c7. That could be. Because now I wouldn't have knight e5 as a response. Clever, clever. I also have a clever move I'm thinking about. Queen to e1. Looks weird to disrupt the rook coordination, but I'm actually threatening bishop a5 there, skewering the queen to the rook. And I'm thinking if queen e1, queen c7, I can play queen g3, defend this pawn. It's a little fancy, but I think it works. I think it's a good idea. Let's do it. Looks almost like a mouse slip, <laughs> but... My queen wasn't that well placed on e2. It can always be improved. So now I have access to g3 and the king side. Like maybe h4 also is a good square for the queen down the line. And bishop a5. Yeah, I would anticipate he responds with queen c7. So queen c7, queen g3. And I'll just get ready to play rook h1 then. Queen c5 instead. Okay, so he's threatening bishop takes d3 now. That's important to realize. Could just sidestep with our king, king b1. Yeah, I don't think there's any reason to do anything other than that. Yeah, not really. It's a helpful move, too. He's taken away another square from his knight. This time, the knight on d7. Maybe he should go for e5. Just try to blast open the center. That's risky, though, because superficially he does gain some activity by playing that. But opening the position could uh, trend well for my, my pair of bishops in the long run. I might also play e5, f5, and just keep the position closed. I'll, I probably would take it, though. So if e5, f takes e5, let's say knight takes e5, knight takes e5, rook takes e5, I'd likely play... Hmm. Hmm. Maybe queen f1 there to keep an eye on e2. 
If queen g3, he could play the rook into e2. Yeah, this might be his best chance. I guess I'm not totally shocked that he played it. Because if f5, bishop f7, his position is pretty reasonable despite being down a pawn. So let's run that line again. Uh, f takes e5, knight takes e5, knight takes e5, rook takes e5. Queen g3, rook e2. I guess I can just play rook e1 then. Hmm. Maybe I should play f5 and just deny him the activity that he gets after taking. The five's slower, but f5, bishop f7, it does go a long way to prevent some of his threats. I could play f5, bishop f7, g5. Yeah, let's do that. This seems safer. I just wasn't too keen about f takes e5. That'll be interesting to see after the game what the computer thinks about that line. Maybe after bishop f7, I can play queen h4. I need to connect my uh, rooks together again. And queen h4 could be a good way to win a tempo on this pawn. Queen h4, maybe e4. Nah, but that's that's not going to lead to anything. All right, let's do it. So idea rook he1 on the next move. Hitting this pawn, gaining a little time. The bishops are opposing each other, so it makes sense to look at knight discoveries, like knight e3 and such, but it's it doesn't look threatening enough for him. Knight e3, bishop takes e3, bishop takes a2, king takes a2, queen takes e3, knight d2, I suppose. I'm still up a pawn. I'll be attacking h7 still. Looks okay. Yeah, he plays a defensive move. So now the queen is on the same diagonal as the rook, so bishop b4 again comes to mind. Can I play c4, and then after the knight moves, then bishop e4? Aha. Uh -huh. I could do that. c4, yeah, it just looks good. It's an anti-positional move, blocks in my bishop, and this pawn is now messed up, but... Hey, when opportunity comes calling, you better be there to answer the door. So where can he put the knight? He pretty much has to move the knight. I mean, he could maybe play e4, but <laughs> that just looks pretty bad. So if he moves the knight to, let's say, e3, bishop b4, queen b6, bishop takes e7, knight takes d1, he'd actually be threatening queen takes b2 mate after that, so just... Rook takes d1, I'm up a piece. If knight f4, same thing, bishop here. If he moves the knight somewhere other than e3, like f4, he could get into e3 with this queen. So let's say hypothetically, knight f4, bishop b4, queen e3. Well, now it's a moot point, but I was still going to take on e7 in that case. I don't see how he's going to avoid losing an entire piece now. Queen b6 is forced now. Knight takes f5 or knight g2, both trying to attack my queen, are also going to lose material. He got too congested in the center. And that rookie seven move was uh, a big, big error. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think he realizes that there's not much to be said about his position now. Queen b6, we take e7. And if he takes d1, it might just be a test, because bishop takes d8 would be losing in view of queen takes b2, so of course we're going to just recapture. I have a couple loose pieces, like the bishop's undefended, uh, the knight is undefended on f3, but he doesn't have enough firepower to exploit them. I think just bishop takes f6 now is fine. He could play e4, but that's about it. Yeah, let's just take it. Eliminate a key pawn. If e4, I could, I could take it or play knight g5. I think knight g5 is working too. Like e4, knight g5, if knight takes f6, we take on f7. If knight g5, uh, sorry, e4, knight g5, take on d3, take on f7, rook e2, we can just drop the bishop back because then our bishop is holding the b2 point, so there's no queen takes b2 mate. Invades with the queen. I was just thinking knight g5 against that move. Because again, if knight takes f6, we take on f7. Let's do it. If queen e2, I can play bishop b3 perhaps. Or just rook e1 maybe. I would lose d3 with check. I would be okay with that, though. Because if queen e2, bishop e3, maybe he can go knight c5. But even then, just bishop back to c2. I've got everything covered. It's too little too late. Now knight d6 is a threat in addition to queen takes f6. Yeah, now if queen e2, bishop e3 is absolutely fine. There's no knight c5 move to bother the bishop. I think he'll be resigning soon. Maybe play queen e2 just to see if I blunder, but that's about it. He maybe played too routinely after he lost the pawn. Like right around move 13, when I took on g7, he played rook g8, he castled, he played knight d5. Some of those moves were active, but other, the other ones were slow. Like f6 was pretty slow. Maybe instead of castling queenside, he should have looked at that h5 move. Okay, so he does play the queen e2 move. I'm just doing this in reply. Guard the rook, improve our bishop. Give the king a flight square. Yeah, no way to avoid further loss of material. Well, I'm pretty pretty glad I didn't have to go down a main line of the Scandinavian and reveal perhaps some of my preparation in this line. <laughs> Maybe in a future video, you guys will get to see that. Because to be quite honest, there are lines of the Scandinavian that are very tough for black. But the problem is not many people know about them or have the inclination to find those lines because the Scandinavian is played so rarely. So um, I've been able to operate for a very long time 
with the Scandinavians simply because I know that people aren't burning the midnight oil trying to refute it. If you compare it to like the Sicilian or 1E5, um, most white players are going to know what to do against the Sicilian or 1E5, but the Scandinavian is like a completely different animal. It's just one of those openings like you encounter from time to time and just kind of play on sight for most people. Okay, so knight d6. I mean, he's trying to bring his knight into e3 or knight f2, but it doesn't do enough. So Check. we'll just go for the fork. King d7 will probably be played. Okay, let's just take this guy. I bet knight f2 will be the move. At e3, in fact. Okay. So now I can give a check here if I want. At e3 just threatens a rook, not much else. Yeah, let's give a check. Check. Probably he should play king c7 in order to escape through uh, b6, potentially. Might have some mating opportunities, though. King c7, queen takes h7, check, king b6, knight d7. Looks pretty good. I could also just play a total buzzkill move like queen e1 in this position. Queen e1 would just end his resistance almost immediately. We'll just calculate for a second. Queen takes h7, um, king b6, knight d7, check, king a5. Pieces are a little far away. I'm sure knight c5 would win there. But um, again, I don't know if there's any reason to even calculate this stuff because queen e1 is just such an easy way to consolidate. I'm up a rook and a bishop and a couple pawns. So queen e1, and there's no check on c2. There's not a good way for him to uh, even avoid a queen trade. I guess he can play queen f3, but big deal. So we'll play the safe move. You always get the same number of points for a win. You never get points for style. So maybe the computer will say that taking on h7 followed by knight d7 is winning faster. But this is winning easier. And that's what's most important. Now I was thinking queen a5 check. So let's do that. Check. E5 is hanging. If he goes to D6, I can play Knight E4. So he's going to be stepping carefully now with this king, or he should. If king C8, I can play C5, actually. Maybe try to go Bishop E6. Or I could just take on E5, too. Does have Knight takes D1, but yeah, he ran out of time. Okay, let's go back and take a look. So the Scandinavian with Queen A5. Bishop c4 is a flexible move. Um, most people play d4 immediately or knight f3, but I think bishop c4 in some ways is more challenging because uh, when you keep open the option of putting the pawn on d3, it makes it harder for black to choose their setup. I usually play c6 now, and if d3, um, there's been a couple blitz games I've played in this variation where I just won't mess around with bringing the light square bishop out at all. I'll just play, for instance, like here, queen c7, queen e2, and then g6 and Fianchetto the dark square bishop, and maybe later do something with this bishop, like even like uh, b6 and bishop b7 is not out of the question. So I adopt a much more defensive formation against this. And since he played bishop f5, I was kind of encouraged to go for this, because I know from experience this bishop can be exploited um, by the kingside pawn pushes. Let's just add the engine right around here. Like I said, I was even considering radical stuff like this, attacking the b7 pawn, and eyeing the bishop, and also to some extent eyeing f7, but yeah, knight c6 would be the reply. So d3, he goes to e6, bishop d2, c6, just played queen e2. This is a good move, prepares castle and queen side, lines up the queen with the king. So here, yeah, g4, attack the bishop, and now I played f4, threatening f5. One point of his setup, though, is that he has not committed the knight to f6. So he can play knight e7, has to play knight e7. Otherwise, f5 is just winning material for white more than likely. So here I played a3. He correctly did not take on c3. He just made a developing move. 
And here I pondered a little bit. Um, I want to get him to take on c3, but again, because of the pin down the a file, there's some uh, complications as far as making him do that. But I could castle, I could do that. And if takes, I was ready to play knight a2. That's better than playing b takes a3, Check. b takes a3. Black has some compensation here. But uh, knight a2 is cleaner, I think. If queen here, I would have played bishop b3, but apparently f5 is also possible. Ah, queen d4. Ah, okay. Hmm, <laughs> that's clever. And then I can't take here because I'm made on a1. And if bishop c3, queen Check. takes f4, maybe black's going to get three pawns for the piece. Very clever. Okay, well, yeah, I get, castles is possible. Maybe maybe if I'm going to do that, just take Check. on a3, let him take, and play the position where he gets two pawns. But, you know, it's mildly annoying. Um, it's helpful that the pawn is here, actually, because it blocks his bishop. If the pawn's on d4 and black plays b5, I wouldn't be able to play bishop b3 because if queen takes b3 check. So here I could do that or play bishop a2. Probably bishop b3 I would play, but I don't know. It's it's for a rapid game. I think black has decent play in this position, even though it's plus one and a half according to the engine. So I just played bishop a2, making him do something with the bishop now that this threat is on the table. He probably should play bishop d6. I was mentioning this move. I don't think he really considered it because for most Scandinavian players, when you commit the bishop to b4 and your queen's on a5, you almost always end up taking on c3. Like, very rarely would you move this back and allow a discovery. But it is possible. Like, knight e4, queen c7. Check. Take, let's say, knight f3. White's well, better, but it's nothing tremendous quite yet. I like white's bishop pair and um, the kingside play. But uh, at the same time, black is for sure still in the game. Whereas after taking on c3, I take, it looks like he just loses the g-pawn and never really got much for it. Interesting that the computer says don't even bother taking the g-pawn, just castle. I think it wants to go for a, a more direct plan with f5. Because here, black can't castle either way. Like, castling short would just run into f5. And after take, here I can take, because there's no king sitting on e1. Rook f8 or rook a8 doesn't work. I can just move my queen. So that's instructive. Maybe I could just postpone or do away with the bishop takes g7 plan altogether in favor of threatening f5. And even if he covers that f5 pawn, like let's just say this is going to be a bad move, but let's say he goes here. Yeah, I can take, or I can play f5, and if he takes rook e1, I think would be good. Yeah, that just wins a piece. So after castles, white has a huge initiative too. I should have thought about that move. But I was just happy to win the pawn. That's what I had calculated originally. So bishop takes g7, rook g8, bishop back to c3. Yeah, and I think he should have spent a little more time here. He played castles in five seconds, but yeah, like h5 is, is possible. Idea being that if I take, he can take. And the rook and the queen both combine on the attack on g1. At least he can look forward to some compensation. He gets more room for his minor pieces to operate too. His bishop is now liberated. I've got a weak pawn on f4. My pass pawn, my h pawn is um, not significant yet. Computer thinks black's better here, despite white having the pawn advantage still. So he needs to do something like that, or at least he needs to spend time and consider ways to get back in the game. He played too routinely. Now here, as I noted in the analysis, or in, in the game, um, if I were to play f5 now, it would just be a pretty bad blunder. Like he can take, and if I grab on e7, running right into the skewer. So I need to get castled before I do anything too crazy. So castle, now f5 is a threat. Um, he played knight d5 and went back. Yeah, bishop takes d5 is probably still good. I had a feeling the engine might prefer this move. <laughs> Um, and then just like knight f3 or something. I am up a pawn, pretty clear. I might have to avoid a, a transition to an opposite color bishop endgame eventually, but that's so far down the road that I think white being up a pawn and apparently much better positionally too is uh, the, the biggest factor. But I played bishop d2. I wanted to keep my bishop pair for a little while. I was wondering if he could do knight c5 and maybe try to set up certain sacrifices on d3. The problem is, like, nothing really seems to work. 
realistically, he'd need to move this knight to add the rook as an ingredient into the attack on d3, but it's too slow. My bishops and pawns do a good job of keeping his knights at bay. So he played rook hg8, I went knight f3, and then f6. So like I said, I think um, his plan was, he wants to go queen c7, but if he does it right away, I have knight e5. So I kind of think f6 was aimed against that plan. Interesting that the computer says just play h4. I guess that it opens up queen h2 as a defensive option. Yeah, h4 is probably good. He'd probably play h5 in reply, and then g5. I played queen e1. I kind of like this move still. <laughs> it's weird looking, but it gives my queen options on both wings, like queen g3, and I'm also creating the bishop a5 battery threat. I thought he would play queen c7 right now, and I was just going to go here and then bring the rook over most likely. But why does it say equal? That can't be right. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Sometimes the engine will randomly say 0.00. .00. It's like still thinking. It doesn't know how to assess the position yet. So it just gives zero straight across. Um, but queen c5 is what he played. That does create the bishop takes d3 threat, but it's a little too obvious. I just played king b1. And he went e5. Okay, so here, at first I was kind of gung-ho about taking, but I didn't like the play that he gets down the file after this. Now if I go queen g3, like rook e2, I gotta watch out for uh, threats on c2 and d3. So even though I want to open the position up for my bishops, I think f5 was a prudent decision. Just force his bishop back. I have complete control. Um, there's not as many tactics he can, he can fire off when the e-pawn is blocking his rook. So here I played queen h4. Also c4 is good too, huh? c4, knight c7, bishop e3, just push him back. Probably knight d2, yeah, try to bring the knight to e4. Probably several good ways to play this position now for white. So I went queen h4, eyeing these pawns. Rook e7, yep, and then he just ran into c4, walked right into the bishop b4 move, chased the queen away. But needless to say, it's difficult for him no matter what. I did look at this knight e3 move. So we looked at the line, bishop takes e3, uh, bishop takes a2, Check. king takes a2, queen takes. And I have some loose stuff, like c2 is undefended and so is my knight. But, yeah, as you can see, it's still plus two for white. Because also structurally, I'm doing better. I have two pawn islands. He has three. So, all these guys. And especially h7 and f6. That's going to give him some headaches. So this is just a technically winning position for white. But as played after c4, the knight is running out of squares. And, yeah, it was just a cleanup operation, being, being careful. Hmm. Yeah, his best move is to move the rook back and just give up the knight on d5. It's totally losing. Yeah, not much more to be said after this. Just like I said, being careful, not getting uh, <laughs> enthusiastic about winning material that you blunder a mate on b2. Not much more to be said. And it's worth spending the time. You can see I wasn't like moving fast just because I knew I was winning. We still want to make sure we're playing Check. good moves and um, Check. not not regretting any decisions. Yeah, so like here, okay, so apparently there is a force made after queen takes h7. Check. I looked at this line briefly. Check. It is king's out on a5, I'm up a rook plus a knight and pawns. <laughs> I mean, realistically, I could probably let him take on d1 and still win, but I just didn't want to calculate this line, and queen e1 is just so final that, um, you know, I just played the safe move. If I had even less time than this, I would definitely play queen e1 and wouldn't mess around with looking for the mate. Um, you just got to win in the way that feels most comfortable to you when you're this winning. The way that win that feels most comfortable and that minimizes the chance of uh, your Check. opponent pulling off some miracle. And for me, it was this line. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this Scandinavian, and I'll be back tomorrow with another standard video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.